Hi everybody, my name is Mike from Western Axolotl and I want to go over the basics of how to take care of axolotls. Uh, you may have a bunch of questions, it might be a first time axolotl or you just struggle to keep them healthy with the ones you have. So I'll go over a few different things, um, hopefully it'll be helpful to you. Um, first of all, here's our website, we're westernaxolotl.com. We have more resources here on axolotl care, food and supplies, a little bit of history of our company. Um, also, we have a lot of axolotls for sale. Most times during the year, we ship all over the U.S., so feel free to check us out. Okay, so how do you take care of axolotls? Um, really, there are a whole series of different things you want to be concerned about or deal with when you're talking about axolotl care, and I want to go over each of them one at a time. Um, if we don't answer all of your questions, feel free to contact us through our site, but we'll do the best we can here. Probably the first thing you need to think about when getting an axolotl is how you want to set up your tank. And to start with that, what kind of tank you want to buy? Well, we recommend about 10 gallons or more per adult axolotl. You can get it with a little bit more when they're younger, but for the most part, that's what you're looking for. You want to keep axolotls of similar size together, and you don't want to put axolotls in tanks with other buddies like fish or other things. They'll either eat them or the things will chew on the axolotl's gills and make life uncomfortable for them. Um, in general, axolotls spend most of their time at the bottoms of tanks, so you don't want really tall tanks. It won't hurt an axolotl to have a taller tank, but a 20 long is just a perfect tank for one or two axolotls. We highly recommend them. Um, that's what we use a lot, or if we use 10 gallons for individual axolotls, uh, but it's a good way to get started. So 20 long, great way to get going. Uh, again, length over height is a good way to think for your axolotls, and 10 gallons per axi. What do you want to put on the bottom? Well, a lot of people vary about this. For the most part, we recommend sand on the bottom of your tanks. Some people prefer to put nothing on the bottoms of their tanks, and that works fine too. Uh, we prefer sand, does a little bit of filtration, gives a place for your probiotic bacteria to live. Uh, we think it's a little bit better. Uh, you have to do a lot of cleaning with a naked bottom, but it does work. What you don't want are the small pebbles. They're in a lot of fish kits, and the axolotls will eat those, and then they can't pass them. Um, if you want to have rocks on the bottom, fine. Get really, really big rocks, but you'd be surprised at how big a thing an axolotl can fit in its mouth. If you're going to do rocks, you need ones that are so big that they can never get an axolotl mouth. Um, as far as color of your sand, it's really up to you. Uh, we think it's kind of neat to do black sand if you have a light axolotl and light sand if you have a dark axolotl. You mix it up how you want. You can get play sand from the hardware store and rinse it a whole bunch. All of that works, um, but again, we recommend overall sand with a contrasting color for your axolotl when you have um, your axis set up. As far as hides and plants go, when you're specializing your tank and trying to get it all done up, hides are great. Axolotls like to hide a little bit. They don't want to be out on full display all the time. Um, we use broken pots because they're cheap, um, but if you want to get a fancy hide, you can absolutely do that. Just be prepared to spend some money. Having a couple around, at least one per axis, is a good way to go. As far as vegetation goes, you can do that as well. Um, it's kind of hard to keep live plants going. Axolotls can be kind of mean to them, and you don't want a whole lot of light on your axes as well. I wouldn't recommend lighting your tank at all times, which is good for plants, but not great for axolotls. So it's probably the best thing to get plastic plants. Uh, that's what most people in the trade believe, and, and we tend to agree on that. But if you can keep your plants healthy, they can be good for the chemistry of the tank, and they aren't a bad idea. Filtration. So axolotls are a little bit of a challenge when it comes to filtration. They don't like a lot of water movement, but they can be kind of dirty. And so it's a bit of a challenge to get exactly the right level of filtration for your axes. Uh, we generally recommend bubble filters, especially for younger axes. These are the ones we sell on our site, um, and they're great. They got the dual bio sponges and lots of aeration. They're really, really good for younger axes. As our axes get older, we tend to move towards sit and side filters that don't move the water too much, but do a good job of filtering through the water. Um, this is what we would recommend. Uh, there are other filters that'll work. If you get too much water movement though, your ax levels tend to get stressed out. So you wanna be a little bit careful about that. Temperature is probably one of the biggest things that people freak out about axes because there's a lot of information on the internet. Yes, ax levels like it cold, but don't freak out too much about this. You just need an air conditioned house um, somewhere in the 70s is going to be okay for your axes. Keep them out of direct sunlight. And another recommendation we would make is don't put a cover on top of your tank that traps the heat in there. If you need to put a cover because you have cats or something, putting a metal mesh top across the top keeps things out but allows some of the heat to get out. If you're really concerned about temperature, um, you could pick up a fan 
and a small desk fan and blow it across the top of your tank. This will drop the temperature through evaporative cooling. You will have to do a little bit more frequent water replacements if you do that, but it's, it's a good way to keep the tank cool in the hottest months. As far as food goes, we use sinking axolotl pellets um, that we sell on our site. They're great, they have high nutrients, they do well for getting the axolotls growing. Um, frozen bloodworms are what we tend to feed them when they're a little bit younger, and we make that transition to the pellets as they get older. Um, you could always feed them bloodworms, the axes love them. They're just a little expensive compared to the pellets, so we don't do them quite as much. Um, regular earthworms are a great treat as well. Um, as far as how much you feed your axolotl, it's a good idea to feed them maybe two or three times a week. You want to err on the side of underfeeding, not overfeeding your axolotls. If you overfeed them and waste builds up in the tank, that can cause problems for your nitrogen cycle, which we'll get to in just a minute. Um, every three days for youngsters, two to three days for youngsters, as they get older every three or four days, an adult axolotl, maybe a teaspoon of pellets per adult, uh, maybe a little less than that as they're younger, um, and you work your way there. Just make sure they're not leaving a lot of food waste around. Finally, our last issue is probably the most complex one, and that's the nitrogen cycle. One of the biggest challenges in taking care of aquatic pets is monitoring and managing your ammonia cycle or your nitrogen cycle. Axolotls and any aquatic pets produce waste. Some of the food they don't eat produce waste, and some of the food they do eat eventually becomes waste. And this waste can build up in your tank. What you need in your tank is a population of probiotic bacteria to break down that waste. If you don't have the bacteria, the waste builds up, your ammonia levels go high. If you have the right population of bacteria, they'll maintain the nitrogen cycle, maintain the ammonia levels, and, and you'll have a really healthy tank. The mistake people make is they go through and every once in a while they just rinse out their whole tank and scrub everything down and get rid of all those good bacteria that need to be in your tank. You don't want to do that. You want to get the bacteria in your tank and take care of them like you would your axolotl. So how do you do this? Well, some people believe the best thing to do is to cycle your tank before you even get your axolotl in. This is the best practice. Get your tank going, um, leave it there for a couple of weeks, monitor the ammonia levels, and when they come down, that's when you introduce your axolotls. That's probably the best way to do things. That said, some of us don't have time for this. You got your axolotl, you got a birthday party coming up, you wanna get them going right away. You can do that too. You just need to monitor the ammonia level as you're waiting for those bacteria to come in and your tank to get cycled. So what do you do? Well, it's pretty simple. All you do is you fill up your tank, and I apologize for these graphics, fill up your tank with your water, let it sit there, and after a few days, start monitoring it. Um, here's a picture of an ammonia test kit we picked up at a local pet store. Pretty much the way they work is you put about five milliliters of water in a test tube, put a certain number of drops in there, and wait a few minutes for it to turn a color. If it turns yellow, that's a good sign. That means your axolotls aren't producing too much waste and the bacteria that are in there are eating away at the waste. If that's the case, all you need to do is trade out about 20% of your water. This is what you should do normally every week as long as you have a healthy tank. This is where you go. Again, every week you monitor your nitrogen levels, replace 20% of your water. Now, let's say you put that water back in, come back in a week, and you try to monitor the ammonia levels, and you put your drops in it, and instead of showing up that nice yellow color, your water turns green with most test kits. If this happens, it means your ammonia level is spiking, and you need to do something to take care of your axes. Again, not terribly complicated, you just replace lots of the water. Not all of it, but lots of it. Replace about 80% of your water. Take out 80% and put, 80, put another 80% of fresh water back in. Incidentally, what kind of water do you want in your tanks? You want tap water is just fine. You just wanna make sure you treat it with a, a conditioner to get rid of the chlorine, or at least leave it out in a bucket overnight or 24 hours so the chlorine can evaporate out. But tap water in most cases is just fine. But that's pretty much all you need to do to take care of your axolotl in terms of managing the nitrogen cycle. If you monitor it once a week, keep an eye on it, change out 20% of the water once a week, you're good. If the ammonia levels spike, respond by changing out 80% of the water and monitor it pretty frequently until it settles down. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what you need to know to take care of an axolotl. If you have any other questions, feel free to hit us up. Thanks for visiting Western Axolotl.